We are in the weekly Torah portion, Parsha Shlach. Okay, and it's on page 798 in the Art Scroll. And his introduction is always worth going through, so let's just run through it. He said, The command to send the Miraglim, as uh, the spies, as the nation stood at the threshold of Eretz Israel, and Moshe told them that it was time to co- uh, conquer it, a pivotal incident took place. Twelve of the truly great leaders of the, tri- of the nation, one from each tribe, went to survey the land and came back with a report that demoralized the people and caused them to lose faith in their ability to occupy their divinely ordained inheritance. As a result, the entire generation was condemned to death in the wilderness and Israel's entry into the land was delayed for nearly 39 years. So we're talking about there was the second of the first year of their being in the desert. After they, fulfill, after they built the Mishkan and so on and so forth, it would be the second year after leaving Egypt, but in reality, it's uh, around the first year, 38 to 40, 39 years. So the, the uh, affair of the spies presents many questions. Among them, why is it necessary to send spies as if God's promise was not sufficient? After the disastrous outcome of this mission, why did Moshe and Yoshua themselves send similar expeditions 38 years later, or 39 years later. Why did Hashem allow Moshe to send spies? If Moshe was in favor of the stratagem, why did he blame the people for having made the request? And since Moshe gave the spies a detailed list of questions about the land, why were they condemned for telling the truth as they perceived it? Many years later in the book of, uh, of, De- of Deuteronomy, Devarim, Moshe himself gave equally frightening pictures of the awesome power of the Canaanite nations that were waiting to fight the Jews. Why then were the spies punished for saying essentially the same thing? He said such questions will be discussed in the notes below. So he's just setting you up for all the questions you can ask. The the chapter of spies, this is according to Rashi, the interesting is his speech was basically from the Ramban, and now he's saying Rashi's thing. And he says, the chapter of spies follows immediately after the incident of Miriam's criticism of Moshe and her punishment for it, although the spying mission took place shortly after her experience and uh, had taught the nation the gravity of malicious gossip. Nevertheless, the spies, wicked spies, did not learn their lesson and were not deterred from slandering the land. That's his introduction. Now let's look at the actual verse. Okay. It says, Vayedabir Hashem el Moshe Limo. Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, strange words here, Shalach lecha anashem, send for yourself people, men. Vityaturu at Eretz Kanan, and they will spy out the land of Eretz Canaan, uh, of the land of Canaan, sorry, Asher ani notein levnei Yisrael, that I am giving to Bnei Yisrael, ish echad, ish echad levmatei avotav kishlachu, one man, one man, and I was one man from each tribe, from his father's tribe, you will send, kol nasi behem, all princes, or all leaders, they'll all be leaders. Rashi says, like you said, shlach chan Hashem, why does it, what's the Parsha here doing with the last one? Talking about the Marag, uh, Patava Miriam. So as we just said, that is, they should have taken the Musar. They should have taken the, the lesson learned and not uh, have wanted to spread Lashon Hara or Moshe Shemra again, at least against the land. Okay, that's the basic thing. Now we come to looking at a little bit of the words. Shlach lecha. It should have just said what? I'm asking you. What should it have said? Instead of shlach lecha, shlach. Simple. Command form. Send. Why send for yourself? Normally when we say for yourself, think about it. Lech lecha. When Avram, when Hashem told Avram, lech lecha, go for yourself from this land. Because when you do that, you're going to grow into something great. It's for you. It's for your benefit. So if you know, you're going to say, 
Mastava simply stated it should be for your benefit, right? Rashi says no. It doesn't. It's not. It does not mean that here. It means ledatcha, according to what you want. He's saying to Moshe, send, if you want to send them, remember it's a new Moshe Rabbeinu, not a me. You want to send them, send them. Ani ani misavalach. God says, I'm not commanding you. Im tirza, if you want to send them, shalach, send them. Your choice. Why? What's going on here? Lefish Rashi continues. Lefish Baal Yisrael v'Yamru Nishukhan Hashem Lefaninu, because Bnei Yisro came to them, came to Moshe and said, "Let's send people in front of us, because we want to know what was your intent. We want to know how to enter the land. Why did they want to know how to enter the land? Why didn't they just rely upon God bringing them?" can't rely upon miracles. It's a simple rule. We can't rely. That's why we have to go to work. That's why we do what we, that's why you have to work the farm. You can't assume that it's going to grow on its own. And the reason you can't is because we're not such tzaddikim. Okay? If we were tzaddikim, and even they have to do something to show their emuna in Hashem, but you know, they have to do, God doesn't work with empty vessels as it were. So, they, it seems that they're doing what everybody else does. They came to Moshe and said, look, we want, we're not allowed to rely upon miracles. If we cannot rely upon miracles, then we're asking you to send spies ahead of us so that we will know how to enter. Yeah. Um, not really on the subject of the part, but on the subject of not relying on miracles. Yes. Could you, to, to play devil advocate and to ignore the way that they did it, when the people complained about the mana, saying it's unnatural and we should be there should be ways that we should be using the bathroom, but we're not, so this is unnatural. That's so, 40 years later, by the way. It was 40 years later, so... So, so regardless of how they did it, so in, a, in a complaining way, but to play, the, to play the devil's advocate, you could say that they're also not trying to not rely upon the miracle of this month. Even, not relying. Not relying. It's, it's given to them, but they don't... They see that it's... I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, so, when it comes to that, the miracle, they already had complained just... I mean, very quickly. Right. The, the that was last week's parsha. But the uh, what they're doing is they're saying that all they we don't have enough food to eat. We're running out of food, right. so God gives them food miraculously. Now what happens is they just want to complain. Right. So they come. It's not. It's not a matter of I don't want to use what you're doing. They just want to complain. And they want to say in addition to man. Which isn't really working that well. I mean, we're not going to the bathroom or anything. But besides that, we're sick, we're sick and tired of tofu. We want, we, even though we can make it taste like anything we want it to, we want the real stuff. I mean, no matter how much I use tofu, because I, I, I'm eating tofu these days. So, uh, tofu, no matter what I can make it taste like, it does not have the texture of the food I want to be. In other words, I can make it a hamburger, I can make it. Well, I don't know what they're making the hamburger from, actually, but I can I can use the right spices. That's the whole thing. But when I'm eating it, if it doesn't have that texture, it doesn't have you know, and and that is unique. Meat has a unique texture. Fish has a unique texture. You cannot duplicate that uh, or replicate. Actually, you cannot replicate that with tofu. Again, you can get the taste. I'm not going to argue taste. They can do a very good job with all with all their enhancements. But it's not the same texture. So they are now arguing and saying, okay, you know, we want the, uh, like, like, like last week, we want fish, we want this, we want that. Uh, with the stuff you're not giving us, that's what we want. And we want meat, even though they had a lot of cattle. So you want a piece of steak, kill a cow. You know, leave me alone, take what you want. And, you know, when you run out of your cows, then come crying to me. But until then, don't bother me. You have more cows than, uh, you know, the, that we have to put you, ultimately we're going to have to put you in a different land. That's how much cows you're going to have. You need, you'll need a lot of grazing land. So that, again, that's just a complaint. Right. We're not relying upon miracles at that point. We're just complaining. Right. Here, they're not complaining. There's, it's very logical what they're saying. They're asking Moshe, saying, okay, you, so we're going to go into Eretz Fine. 
So let's have a way to get it. And that's why he says in Devarim, when he's retelling the story, he says, You all came to me and you said, we want to go. Now Moshe asks Hashem and Amar, and he said, I said to him, it's a good idea. I agree with him. As it says, I took you up from the uh, the the uh, from is from Egypt, Chayeim Shani Notein Lehem Akom L'Taot. So, oh, I'm sorry. So and I and I, I'm and so most of the I said is good, as it says. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. I I messed that up. Hashem says no problem. He says let him do it. Chayeim. Because I'm going to give them a place to make a mistake. The Monlish, in order that they won't inherit. In other words, I told them I'm bringing them to a good land. I, God, said I'm bringing you to a good land. So believe me, folks. Don't, you know, don't say it the other way. And you just have to believe me. You have to trust in me. If you don't trust in me, then we're starting off in a bad situation. So if you want to send them, that's up to you. But just understand, it's according to your knowledge. Not, it's not for your good. It's not for their good. I'm going to give them, as the saying goes, enough rope with which to hang themselves. In other words, if they would come and they would say the land is good and we would go, fine. That's going to be up to them. God knows what's going to happen. But, and he knows that that will not happen. They're going to uh, ruin it for everybody. So now, that's number one. The uh, the the, they ask the question when Rashi says according to your knowledge and says I didn't command you so it's a, Rashi had a big question here why? because it was known again with the Sifti Chacham he explains this Hello, Hashem. certainly it was known before Hashem that they that in the future they would err they would make a mistake they would sin as a result of this as uh, this this uh, mission uh, so im came if that's the case so if that's the case why did god command them to send again shlach is command form so why did he command them to send miraglam the spies before them because through their hands Punishments are going to come. They won't come to Israel. They're all going to die because they're going to die in the desert. And that's why Rashi has to explain, I'm not commanding you. I'm giving you the option. Even though it's command form, I'm not commanding you. If you want to send, send. Otherwise, again, it would have just said, Shlach. Okay? Uh, so Aram Pirish from Vila Shalach it did arrange for Lomi Lach again. That's what I've just said. To give him a dictiv tikrivu and elai, but since it's written, and you all of you came close to me, and Vatomru Nishlacha and Hashem, and you said, "Let's send men before us." Vadai Nimlach Moshe, because his Baruch was certainly Moshe had to ask Hashem. Uvata Tshuva Shalach, and so the answer came as in send. Uvehecha Chunatina Rishut. So by force, you have to say that he gave them permission and not a command. Since it was only an answer to the question, it was just teaching that they were given permission and not the commanded to do it. And the word to you, he needed to say, he needed to say it, Oh, Derech Allah uh, that's made the lang- way the language, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, okay. Uh, so he's just looking at that, and then all the Joshka When Hashem saw <clears throat> that the Maraglim, the spies, will in the future uh, sin, Kara Otan Al He said to in Moshe's name to the name of you know. In Moshe, you do it. Kishira, God is Baruch who had Zakanim, Shemasim Shem. But when he saw, when God saw that the Zakanim, that they would do good, what does it do? Karoton Lishmo. Hashem called a name. Right here, Moshe is calling a name. Moshe is going to pick out the spies, not Hashem. 
If Hashem would pick out the spies, then it's, Hashem, it's all like God. Right? Then it's unfair. So here he says, no, uh, you, I'm going to pick them out, and when it comes to the spies, as for the, uh, I am uh, each, assemble for me the 70 men. Right? So that's how we know that when it's all from Moshe. Moshe's picking the men, Moshe's deciding that's a good idea. By the way, how could Moshe assume it's a good idea? Just to go a little further into the story, because that is also important. What is Moshe doing? Here, the people come out to him and say, Moshe Rabbein, we want spies to go in. A very good claim. We want to know. We don't want to rely upon a miracle. And Moshe says, okay, and so on and so forth, right? What, if you go to Devarim, the story changes just a little bit. And the story goes like this. When they came to Moshe, they said to Moshe, we want to send spies. And he, so Moshe says, you do know that, you know, Shem is saying, yes, we know, but we want to know what the best way to go and so on and so forth. So he compared it, Moshe Rabbeinu compared it to a donkey salesman, or today a used car salesman, if I want to update the Rashi. The guy goes to the, he goes into the used car salesman, or it's a donkey salesman, and says, I want to buy the donkey. Okay, very good. But I want to test drive the donkey first, or I want to test, car, test drive the, the car. Let's stay with the donkey. You understand where I'm going, okay? Yeah. So I want to test drive the donkey. Good. So he says, can I take him to the mountain area? Yes, you can take him to the mountain area. Can I take him down to the sea coast? Yes, you can take him to the sea coast. Can I take him on the, on the valleys? Yes, yes, yes. He keeps saying, wherever he wants to go, yeah, you can take him. That's where you can go with the test drive. And then the guy says, you know what? If you're willing to let me go anywhere, obviously it is a good donkey. Otherwise, you wouldn't let me do it. Here's your money. And he walks and he takes the donkey and he goes away without test driving the donkey. Okay? Because if you would, if I would have said no to me, then I'd know that something's wrong. But the fact is, you're saying yes to all of my demands, so it must be that you wouldn't lie to me because I'll figure it out really quickly. So the same thing when they want to go to when they come to Moshe, Moshe is playing the donkey salesman, and they say, Moshe Rabbein, we want to send spies. Oh, spies? Why would like to do that? Well, we want to know how to go into the land. We want to know if it's a good land. We want this and that. You know what? What a great idea. Uh, you know, it must be that you're, you're uh, let's do it. So this, and they don't say, really? Oh, well, okay. You know, they, they continue on that. And whatever they ask, he's like, yes, 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 yes. And finally, of course, he gets everybody together and they send it. And we know what happens later. They make the mistake and they come back with a bad report. But that's where he was coming from. He wanted to go and to try to convince them they shouldn't send anybody by giving in to them. And then, but in the end, because they say, no, we want to send them because of what, you know, the, the good reasons they gave, well, then he has to finally give in and he has to send them. Otherwise, they would know or they would feel that, oh, you only said yes to get us off your back, but really now we know you don't want to send, so now we know that something's wrong. You understand? That's where, he, that's where he's coming from. Okay, so then... My next verse, by Yishlachot Moshe, so Moshe sent them. Mimidbar Paran al Pi Hashem, from Midbar Paran, from the wilderness of Paran, uh, by the, uh, by, uh, 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 the mouth of God, and it was by Rashi says, what does that mean? It doesn't mean command, because we just said Hashem didn't make a command. It was just saying, okay. So he says, Bereshuto, Rashi again stays with his opinion and says, this is all with God's permission. Not by command. Then in other words, he didn't stop him from doing it. Now, if you know something, and this is a question on God, God knows what's going to happen. Why didn't he stop the people? So what's the answer? Free will. Free will. Exactly. Free will is the answer. If I, if God's going to stop us, we can't make any mistakes. First of all, why is free will important in this case? Why do your parents allow you to make mistakes? What? So that's the natural reward for correct behavior? Besides that, don't go to reward and punishment. Oh, uh, it's, um, wait, why, why is parents... Why do your parents, why do your teachers, why do people, why do adults let kids make mistakes? As long as they're not dangerous mistakes, obviously. Right. What happens when you make a mistake? You learn. You learn from it. Okay. It's a learning experience, right? So we have to learn. If I always protect you, you'll never learn. 
So I have to let you make your mistakes. No matter how much I want to save you, I can't save you because by saving you, I'm hurting you. I'm not letting you grow, right? If I tell you, uh, you know, today, the, the, the laws are insane. I can't say it any other way. I'm sure everybody does it. And I know it's, it's dangerous not to do it. But when I was growing up, we never wore a helmet when riding our bicycles. I'm not talking about uh, motorcycles. Yeah. Motorcycles, we always had, I never rode a motorcycle, but you always, you only here in this state do I see people without helmets and I think they're insane. But again, why not? If you're gonna kill yourself, go out the good way, yeah? Okay, tell you. but it, it, a bicycle, which goes, if you're going downhill and you're pedaling really fast, Maybe you can get to 20 miles an hour, maybe. Most of the time you're going 15 tops. We only had single speed in those days. We didn't have 10 speed bikes. 10 speed bikes, by the way, have those handlebars. So you're gone down. We used to have um, banana handlebars. So it was like a motorcycle. It was a different type of thing. I forget what they called it. We had banana seats. It was all bananas in those days. But uh, it, was, it was easy to pop wheelies. It was, it was a very easy bike to drive, ride. But again, you're not, you're not going that fast. So if you fall, you're going to hurt yourself. I'm not going to argue. You can't scrape your knees. And if you hit the sidewalk the wrong way, you're dead. All those things are true. I'm not taking anything away. But we didn't know about that. It wasn't even a thought in anybody's mind. Okay? And... What happens, your parents are, well, it's usually a father in those days who was teaching you how to ride a bike. And what does he do? He ran behind you. I don't know if that's how your father was you, but he ran behind you, holding the seat. And then you pedal, 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 you're pedaling. And then we let go. And you go until you realize that we're not holding up. Boom, then you fall down. And what we do to you, do we say, oh, Tatala, oh, we have to go home. We have to give you a, an ice cream bar. No, we say, get up again. Let's do it again. You say, no, 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 shut. Enough, enough. Let's go. You have to, you have to fall. You have to, it's going to, you're going to hurt. Next time, keep pedaling. Don't stop. Don't look around. Don't be nervous. Two, three, four times you fall and you realize, uh oh, I better get this or I'm going to really hurt myself. And you ultimately will ride your bike by the fifth or sixth time, or maybe the 20th time, whatever it takes you to, to get that balance and to realize that you know what the balance is. But again, if I never let go, you'd never learn. You'd always be relying upon me as, as the one who's holding your bike. And while it's always nice to rely upon Hashem, uh, and we should, but at the same time, Hashem wants to, he says, okay, look, I'm going to let you go on the way you want to go. You may get hurt. I'm warning you, you, you may get hurt here, but that's up to you. You know, I'm not going to stop you until I have to. I'm not, you know, if it's not, if it's not for your good anymore, so I'll have to stop you. Yeah. Okay. When our dad had a motorcycle. Say again? When our dad had a motorcycle, he'd always say the people who go around without with just tank tops and shorts are addressing for the ride and not the crash. What you need to do is dress for the crash. Two people. Right, there's two people. People who dress for the crash and not the ride or vice versa. Right. Because... It's, it's, you're learning leather and a helmet, it's, it's burning hot whenever you come to a stop because the engine is going by your, or your feet are right by the engines and it's like 80 degrees because you only ride in the summer because it's hard to do in the winter. Right. So, but you're in leather. But then the people who are in the tank tops, when they go down, they have a yeah. very short, very intimate relationship with the pavement. Well, of course. Again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in favor of these things, but no, right. okay, though. No. Those people are, are dressing for the ride, right. not right. the crash. Right. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so what happens? Like I said, Moshe sent them from the Paran uh, with God's permission. All of them were men. Rashi, B'nai Yisrael, they were all leaders or heads of B'nai Yisrael. So what does Rashi says? Rashi says, what do you mean all of them were men? In this case, when it says Anashim means all important people. At that time, they were good people honest, upstanding people. They weren't the, what they was going to come back, liars or Rishayim. They, right now they're Kesherim. Right now they're, they're good guys, okay? And, and this, again, Sifta Chalman says, what does that mean that all kosher right now? Pirush, kol stam on the shim lashon chashiva. Anytime, he says, anytime you just see the word man, Rashi's telling us that means importance. 
When it comes to a place of explaining it, like here, but when it's all coming to describe a place, like it says, that the men said, or and the men, they open at the op- they were at the opening of the house. Then all these cases are really men and not chashivish. Not not important. So in other words, sometimes it's men. If it's send the men, it doesn't mean send importance. It means send the people. But when it comes to identifying, in this case, kulam anashim, all of them are men. All obviously, all of them are men. Who else are going to be the the heads of their father's house? Won't be women. Women aren't. You know why it wasn't women? By the way, why weren't any women put into this package? Besides inheritance, because women were all Zionists, none of the women were questioned about going to Eretz Israel. They also, if Hashem said we're going to go, we're going to go. They had unbelievable uh, emuna in Hashem. That's women were not part of the Eglazov. They were not part of the Golden Calf. Wait a second. They were not part of the Golden Calf. They were not part of the spy mission. They weren't part of any of this stuff. They were always saying, "Let's go, let's go, let's go." That's why later on, when it comes to uh, the daughters. Um, What's his name? Um, Slavka's daughters. And they said, we want land. And they were, of course you have to have land, you know, because you don't have any uh, brothers. But So they were constantly fighting for the land, going to Eretz so on and so forth. The, that's why the women were never part of these things. Yeah. Did the women not die in the 40 years? Did that, did that they didn't happen? die because of this. That generation's women did not die. I'm saying they did not die because of this, right? They may have died as a natural, as old right. age, it was, it was but it wasn't because of this sin. No. They were in, the, in, their, sword, in their extra sojourning for 39 years. Say again? How long did they, how long did they, they did a sidetrack around Israel? Like 30 well, years? Didn't, it was 40 years altogether. 40 years to scale off that generation. <coughs> so, like 20 to 40, was it? 20 to 60. 20 to 60. The only people that were obligated to die were the men from age 20 to 60. Okay. I thought it was just that generation, age 20 to 60. The men. Right now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Only 26. Only the men and only not the Levites either. The Levites also were in part of that. Because they were counted from uh, 25 and up yeah. to, thir- to 50. They also were in part of the Eglazov. They were in part of the Eglazov. And it's, right. They and they weren't part of the spy mission either. Wait, I thought, I thought one man from each tribe came. Yeah, but not Levi. So only Levi. Levi wouldn't get land. No, no so you're splitting the tribes up. You're splitting Ephraim and Manasseh up. Oh, oh, right, they came as a package. Right. So here are the men. Here, let's go through it. El Shmotam, uh, these are the names. The Mate Ruven, for the tribe of Ruven, you had a person named Shemua ben Zakor. For the tribe of Shimon, you had Shafat ben Chori. For the tribe of Yehudi, you had Kale ben Yefuneh. So Kalev would give a good report, by the way, right? Kalev's going to give a good report. Yeah. With Joshua. With Joshua, right. Lamate Yisachar, from the tribe of Yisachar, you have Yigal ben Yosef. Lamate Ephraim, Hoshea ben Nun. Ultimately, his name would turn into Yehoshua. We'll, we'll find out, but Hoshea ben Nun. Lamate ben Yamin, Palti ben Rafu. That's for the tribe of ben Yamin, you have Palti ben Rafu. For the tribe of Zavun, you have Gadiah ben Sodi. For the tribe of Yosef, the tribe of Manasseh, which is interesting too. Why does it say, Lamate Yosef, Lamate Manasseh? Why didn't it say, Lamate Yosef, Lamate Ephraim? Okay, it should have been said both, right? If, it's, if you're identifying this is the tribe of Yosef, the tribe of Manasseh, so it should have done the same thing for Ephraim. Why doesn't do it? And, it's, and his name would be Gadi ben Susi. So, what, you have any guesses as to why it didn't do that? Rashi does not say it, by the way. Because, wait, which one was separated? Ephraim? Uh, Menashe. No, it's Menashe and Yosef. Menashe and, Yo- Menashe and Ephraim, the brothers, are the sons of Yosef. Okay. So, Menashe, but it only says to the tribe of Yosef, to the tribe of Menashe. It does not say to the tribe of Yosef, to the tribe of Ephraim. The question is why. Ephraim somehow. Ephraim and again, Kalev. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, from Ephraim is coming uh, Hoshea ben Nun, Joshua. Oh. Okay. So why didn't they say Lamate Yosef Lamate uh, uh, Ephraim? 
Yosef loved Eretz Yisrael. Right. So why should I say that? And we have a negative here. It's Lamate Yosef, Lamate Menashe. What happened? Because that Gadi Ben Susi is going to speak Lashon Hara. And Yosef spoke Lashon Hara against his brothers. His brothers. What? When? When he told about the, he told his father, they're eating Ephraim and Achai, they're getting, they're touching women. Oh, oh, then I think it was Egypt. No, the, yeah, the, whole the whole reason they threw him into the well. So here we're saying, the, the commentaries say, why we identify with Manash? Because just as this person told Lashon Hara, so also Yosef told Lashon Hara, really? You're going to connect him to Yosef for that? I would have rather said, the Mate Yosef, the Mate Mishraim. Because he loved our children. <laughs> okay? But I don't have to, I'm not the writer of the Torah. <laughs> but that's what we're hearing here. It's an amazing thing that they're saying. Okay. Uh, that was. Right, okay. So then, the Mat uh, for the tribe of Don Amiel ben Gamali. Gamali. So that would be his name. The Mate Asher for the tribe of Asher. So Tom Michael. The Mate Naftali. Nachbi ben Vafsi. The Mate Gaguel ben Machi. So you don't you see that there's no Levi here. So Levi is not part of this. Levi is not part of this. They're not part of the Egel Azov. They're not. By the way, their their numbers are very small. They also weren't part of the Shibud Mitzrayim. They weren't worked hard in Mitzrayim because they were the teachers. So that's why they have a very small population. Because they uh, God, they were not part of work them till they die. Remember, Pharaoh said, "Lest they grow," and God said, "They will grow." Well, that had nothing to do with uh, Levi. So Levi has a normal growth to three kids for a family. Right, they have a normal one kid per birth. So they only have twenty two thousand three hundred and. Uh, it's, it's 300 oh, it's, uh, two, 22 oh that's exactly what they had 22,300 okay right right and the other ones all have exp explosions okay but that's the 12 t uh, people that are going in and again by the way they're not the tri they're not the tribal leaders that Hashem picked these are uh, picked by Moshe uh, they're important they, they were big guys but Apparently, they, you know, they, uh, the question, the question you have to ask them is why they went the other way. Here they are, they are picked to uh, give a, a, a report about, about Eretz Israel, and so, and yet they come back with a bad report. How could they? If they're all big leaders, so why wouldn't they first, and the other thing is, of course, what was so negative about their report? They, they answered the questions that Moshe asked. So why are we blaming them for giving a bad report? Uh, the answer is going to be because after they give the report and after Moshe, uh, and they separate from Moshe, and that's when they start speaking Lashon Har about the land. But again, the question is, why did they do that? Yeah, what were you going to ask? Um, why didn't Moshe pick um, the God's chosen leaders? The one that God said they Okay, the leaders of the tribe of Israel, you decide. Why did he pick just important people? Um, it's a good question. Very, very good question. I have no idea. It's a good question. Again, this I think God is telling him this is on you. Pick, pick who you think. And then again, why is he, the other question, of course, is how do you normally send a spy mission? Small numbers. Small numbers. No, two people. You want to send two. So why did they send 12? This is the obvious so reason. What? Right? Everybody's represented, but why would that matter? No. no. They knew they could trust their guy. They, oh, they also oh. knew that their guy... Oh, sorry. Oh. That their guy uh, would uh, know what's necessary for their tribe. There's oh, so land, this and that. Oh. They they would know what they're looking for. If I'm going, I'm a Kohen. So if I, what do I need? I just need a place to uh, do shechting of animals. What, what do I care? You know, and that's why they didn't go. There's no land. But if I'm if I'm uh, from, I don't know, uh, Reuven and God, they have a lot of pasture. They have a lot of animals. They need pa pasture land. So I have to know that there's pasture land. If I'm uh, 
if I'm Zavulin, so I'm a ship faring guy, you know, so I have the ships, I, sh I'm on ships. Trade, trade, ships. He was on the sea coast and so on and so forth. Oh. So he needs to have access to the ports. Right. So if you're going to put him on the wrong land or he doesn't have access to the ports, so or, or there is no access to the ports. I say there is none. So he has to know that too. Is it good for me or not good for me? And so, so, and so on and so forth. We have, each tribe knows what their people need. Right. By the way, it's no different than Congress. Yeah, I'm, you're representing me. My, you're representing on my interests. So I'm sending you to Washington. We're in, it's a swamp land of Washington. That's really what Washington was, a swamp. And so I'm sending you, that's why when he says drain the swamp, it was such an interesting, I mean, I don't know if he even knows the history of, of Washington to know that it was a swamp. <laughs> but so when he said drain the swamp, you know, that was one of his... Uh, Trump. That was one of Trump's lines, drain the swamp. And he was talking about, you know, they already did. right. I, I want to say not only did they, they filled it in, but it's, uh, but that's what you're looking at. I'm sending my representative to Washington to represent me, right. and I'm not looking to the guy of New York to represent me because he doesn't know what I need. When I go to my rabbinical council uh, meetings, okay, since it's always based in New York. What I get to hear is the politics of New York, which doesn't interest me. I have nothing to do with it. I, I mean, sometimes they're fun. But for the most part, I'm so disconnected because I'm in Indiana. And the guy in Chicago, in Chicago the guy in Chattanooga, and so on and so forth, the guy in Israel, he doesn't care what's going on in New York. It's really irrelevant. But again, that, if you, that's what you're focusing. So if, that's, if they would take it to a central place and there is no such thing as a as a uh, central place for the rabbis there's no you know there's no neutral ground we don't and we're going for, we're not representing our group we're rep we're going to learn we're going to get together so it's not a matter of i'm bringing the concerns of my place but it's uh but that's what i'm saying you go to those groups so here you need everybody from these tribes who knows what their group needs who's going to go in and to look at the land from their perspective and give back a, a report okay that's why 12 have to go that's and that's why two didn't later on when they're just looking at how to get into the land with yoshua or with moshe then there's going to be a very small party just to go in figure out where, where to enter and that's it okay but that's really why you had to send 12 okay so then, these are the names of the men of Shlach Moshe, the Torah of Arts, that Moshe sent to spy out the land. And Moshe changed the name of Yeshua, Hoshea Benun to Yoshua. And Rashi says, why did he change the name? He davened on him. And he said, Hashem should save you from the advice of the Moraglim. Now, he didn't say that when he's changing his name. He just said, changed the name Yehoshua. What he had in mind was that prayer. Okay? Wait. So, he was hedging his bets. Say it again? He was hedging his bets. Moshe was sending... He was sending these people who he then prays won't influence his students badly because correct. they're going to lie. Or they might. They might. He might. Right. might. So he's hedging. So these people. Like he's he's so he's giving a bracha to him. Right. Right. He's changing his name. He's not hedging his bet. He's he's giving a bracha to his student. Yes. Right. But on, 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 on account of the these people that I chose, there's a possibility, and so right. just in case, I don't want my student to get corrupted. Correct. That sounds like hedging his bet. It's on a student. On I, a student. I don't. Right. I don't think. I don't know if it's again. I'm not no, sure if you would use. I'm not sure if you would use the language of. Hedging one's bet, but okay. I'm not, I won't argue against it either. Uh, so he brings down that this uh, article says, this intimate, that line intimates that even before the mission began, Moshe suspected that it would end disastrously. Nevertheless, he permitted them to go because the people wanted it, and God does not deny the people the freedom of choice. So he does, he's not just guaranteed that it's going to happen. Right. But he's saying, and why is he thinking something as bad is going to happen? Because 
they, even though, again, he said, yes, it's good, it's good, it's good, and you can do this, you can do that, and they still want to go through with it, not giving in to the donkey argument, if you will. Uh, so, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, he was praying for, uh, he was praying for Yeshua. So now the, the question is, why do you only pray for Yeshua? Right. He says, was it favoritism? So, for, uh, and so the Targum Yonison renders, and he says, when Moshe saw the humility of Yeshua, this implies that Moshe felt the need to single out Yeshua because his humility could make him susceptible to the persuasion of his fellow spies. That's one thing. Okay, so his humility. So uh, that's according to Yo the Targum Yonison. According to the Gur Arye, the reason, that's the uh, Maharal, the reason that the blessing was needed was that if Joshua were to sin, it would be a reflection on Moshe as well. Because people would say that he must have absorbed such a lack of faith from his teacher. Far from a display of vanity on Moshe's part, this was essential to his role as Hashem's prophet. For if the pro if people were to lose faith in him, they might question the Torah itself, which they had received through him. Moshe recognized a difference in personality between Yoshua and Kalev. When the spies discussed their intentions during the mission, Kalev would be reticent in order to know their plan and be able to, uh, to defend Moshe later. Because Kalev would not let his fellow spies know that his faith was still strong. He would not be in danger and needed no blessing. But Joshua would speak and oppose the spies, and this would put him in danger that they might harm him. Therefore, Moshe prayed for him. That's what Hafez First of all, they're going to know what Yeshua is going to say anyway, right? right? So it's going to be, in their minds, if I have to look at it, 11 versus 1. Because they figure Kalev's on their side. Right. And, and if Kalev would be on their side, then the people would have been idiotic to listen to just Joshua. Because everybody assumed that Joshua was going to say, oh no, that's good. If Moshe Rabbeinu says, good, <laughs> my teacher, I, of course it has to be good, okay? So they all knew what Joshua was going to say. That wasn't the question. The question was how many others could they turn? And so if they could turn jo uh, Kalev, which, was a bi would, which would be a big turn. Is he Sorry? It's called Kalev. Right. They get Kalev, so that's, you know, they have a big, very big tribe, and they're all set. So, you know, that's where they were going with that. What? To what? All set to, all set to, to turn around and not go. Their lie would have, they would not have gone to Israel. They yeah, would have stayed in the desert. They said, we're all set. Now what do we do? No, we stay in the desert. So by the way, that, that comes to the other question. Why they want to stay in the desert? They want the, no, the no, what? No, the puffy clouds? I, I, said puffy, I said puffy clouds, but then I just realized that there were actual clouds. But the, the whole thing of like bubble. Yes, they wanted there. to live in the bubble. Right. They didn't think, this is how they get defended, by the way. They really did not believe that the people were set to live off the land. They didn't think that they were good for that. And so they said, better to live out here in a miraculous manner, all be close together. We we're already in a, it's the whole campus, what, maybe two miles long, that's all. And uh, we're all worshiping Hashem. The Mishkan's right here. We're getting fed man in the desert. We get our clothes are uh, growing on us. The shoes, everything is good. I mean, it's a great life. Why do we want to give that up? And the people aren't ready for that. They're not ready. And, and first of all, if they would go, we're going to lose our unity because they're going to go to their place and we won't see each other. So there's a lot going into that, what we call the cheshbon, the, uh, the accounting that these leaders are seeing. And they don't, it's not that they are the leaders, by the way. Again, the people of great name were the other ones. So what they're doing is saying, you know, they, it was not like they're looking out for themselves and their power base. They were looking out for B'nai Israel, And that's how they defended themselves. Now, they were wrong, clearly wrong, and Hashem punishes them for that. But that is, they were, they want to defend them by saying they were doing it the shame Shemayim in their minds. Yeah. By the way, it always it shows you a very important thing that just because you think you're doing it the shame Shemayim, it doesn't always mean it's true. You have to check your gender at the door. You know, what, what do you really want? Are you, people have to grow. We can't live in a bubble. We have to live in a real world. 
We have to give them ice. We have to take mice. We have to plant. We have to do all these things. That's what Hashem wants us to do. He doesn't want us just to remain. Because again, we're not there. If we would be in that situation, we were all tzaddikim. And all we had to do was, uh, you know, we were basking in the, the glory of Hashem. Well, that may be a different situation. But we're not. We never were. And that's why Hashem says, go to work. Yeah. Um, did God punish these guys in, by, the set, by having them die off with the generation? Or? They were killed instantly. Okay. They, they were they died with their tongues uh, grew worms and so on and so forth yeah it was a horrible death huh? but that that's in this parsha that's in this parsha that they die yeah so what happens now let's look at what moshe did so moshe yishlach moshe moshe sent the, these people out the torah at eretz Canaan to spy out the land but him and he said to them i'll do seven Negev, go up in the south Go up in the, on the south side, the at Ahar, and go up to the mountain. Okay, and what does he say? Rosh says, "Who Hayap Solid Shalashal?" Going up the Negev is the worst part of Israel. If I want to show, and now again, if I want to show you, if I want to sell you on something, what should I do? I should bring you to the good place or the bad place? Of course, the bad place. Well, I would think I would. No, if I want to sell you, I'm going to show you the good stuff. I'm not going to say the bad stuff. Oh. Right, I'm going to show you. Oh, there's beautiful stuff. And if I want to show, if I want to sell South Bend to somebody, I'm going to show them this street, or the other the, where the mansions are. No, I'm not going. To, I, I said South Bend. If I want to send South Bend, I'm going to show them where the mansions are, where the beautiful everything is. Uh, uh, you know, manicure. All lawns are manicured. Everything is green. It's an idyllic world here. That's what I'm going to want to show you. I'm not going to want to show you uh, the the, uh, the the houses that are garbage. I'm not going to want to show you because you're not going to want to move in. I'm not going to show you the drug guys. That's not that's not good either, right? So here he says he showed them psola the and shekain derech hatigar marin the psola. So he says the way of salesman is to show the bad stuff first and then show the good stuff. Yeah. And notice this, imagine this is bad, but this is only the, this is only the bad section of town, but, or the worst. And by the way, the negative wasn't that bad anyway. Right. So this is not the best quality, but this, and for you though, this is cream of the crop. Now imagine what the good quality looks like. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's what he's, he's looking at. But yeah. If for selling to somebody to convince who- Say it again, please. If, if for selling to somebody who you're convinced will go along with you, <clears throat> Beyond the the first bad site, yeah. If, yeah. if you know you, if you know you can show them the entire thing, then you can show them all that. But if right. if, they, if they go, as soon as they see the bad, then. By by the way, if I would be selling cars, I would not show them the junk box first. Right. I would show them the good cars. Right. And that's why they always bring you to the brand new cars. You say I want to buy a used car, right? So you go, I want to spend five thousand dollars. Good. So the guy says to you five thousand. Oh, no problem. He doesn't. He ignores you. Tell him, tell him 10,000, by the way. Let's be realistic. 10,000. You can't get a car for 10,000 either these days. So, uh, from a dealer. It's only the car you get for 10,000 is the one you drive off the lot and it's your risk. They don't give you any guarantees. Okay? If they want to sell you the $20,000 car. So, what you do is say, I'm, I want to spend 10,000. That's what I'm spending. Oh, 10,000, no problem. He brings you the car that's 20 and $30,000. And you say, What? You, you didn't understand what I was saying? No, no, don't worry about it. I heard what you say, but I want to get a sense of what you like in a car. So let's drive this brand new car. Oh, you go in, smell the, you know, this new car smell. It has the pickup, has everything you want. He's going to try to convince you at that point. This is what you want. You don't want the other thing. The other thing is going to break down on you. And they're going to have to come back again. He's going to try to convince you, right? He's showing you the best stuff first. You're not interested in showing the bad stuff. If you really are going to push, he's going to give you the, uh, the garbage. And he'll say, okay, but, you know, it's up to you. Whatever you want. Yeah. Okay, that, so but here, he's doing the exact opposite. He's showing, he has a negative. And if, and it can imagine, if you like this, how much more are you going to like the good stuff? Okay? So then, what? Uh-huh, there you go. So then what happens? He says, And you should see, look at the land, see what it is. And also the people that are living on the land. Are they strong or are they weak? How are they going to know if they're strong or weak? No. Walled cities versus no. Very good. If they have walled cities, they are 
weak. If they have unwalled cities, then they rely upon their strength. They're, and they're, they're strong. Hama'at hu imrav. Are they little or are, is it a large population? A small population or a large population? Yeah. What if they're in walled cities and they're strong? What, what if it's, I'm strong, my neighbor's strong, so I have to wall myself up and still be strong? Uh huh. Well, again, you're looking at. Then you're not relying on the You're not relying upon the strength, you're relying upon the walls. You step so on the walls and you shoot them there. So oh, right. Not. Okay. But that, but he's asking, "Am I arts who you shave all there? Who you shave by? And what's the land like that they're living in? Hatovi or Amra? Is it good or is it bad? Umah Harim? What do the cities look like? I show you should be here. Hama Chanim or Misarim? Again, are they fortified or not? Umah arts Shmini and the land is it fat? And those is it fertile? Imraza or is it not? Is it weak? Hayesh ba eights? Is there a tree in the land or iron or is it not a tree? In other words, it could be trees, and H is just a collective term. Rashi says, what do you mean, is there a tree? Of course there's a tree. <laughs> okay. So he says, Is there a, 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 a person who's upright that's going to protect them with his merit? And this is referring to Job, according to the Mephoshim. Job, we hear about that much later on. Job, depending on who you listen to, lived from the time of Abraham, all the way he lived a very long life either that or a short life but nobody seems to know because he ends up in many different time frames okay and then finally it says uh because them you should take some of them will cock them repeat how arts take from the fruit of the land by and then it, the torah tells us by him you may be quran of him and the time period was the time that everything was r ripening in other words wait why is it having to tell you that because it was dry land. It wasn't, in other words, it was a good time to walk around the land. Yeah. When it says mm. to look for a tree that is somebody who's upright and can protect him with their merit. Is there? He's not saying to look. Is there? Is, is there, right. So then, is that like the same, like protect him with the merit? Is that the same, along, along the same lines of Moshe being afraid of go? Yes. Well, oh, because he saved uh -huh. his merits, that he saved uh, low. Right. Rob, no, Lot. He, he saved Lot. Right. Because right. of that, he was afraid that because of all his merits, he, he still may not defeat him. Yes. Right. That would be the same sort of thing. That, is there a tree? Is there something guarding them? But again, through the merits, not right. from the strength. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Is it guarding them during the canon? The peep. The people of Canaan. Right, okay. Like Og was outside. Uh, we're not talking about Og. We're talking about, again, uh, oh, right. Uh, Job. Job. No, they died. Oh, oh, but Og wasn't. Og was a different reason. Well, it's because no, no. he protect. He saved Lot, and since he saved Lot, he was given that reward of long life. Right. So Moshe was afraid of him because of that merit. Right. That's all. He wasn't. No, he would not be considered the tree. No, no. He, they're, looking, they're, they're seeing if there's another person like that with a lot of merit. Right. That could stand up for the Canaanites. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. Well, that's not good. The right.